Gentlemen, welcome back to the shop. It'll come as a shock. But, uh, don't make no never mind. I'll take it any which way I can get it. Swing both ways like a barn door, ACDC. I will turn to the metric side depending on the price. Always looking for a sore dick deal. I'm sorry about that. You're going to get nothing but bulk chicken antibiotic ads in your feed now. Recall in the previous video this AR500 plate abrasion resistant 500 hardness on the Brunel scale which equates to about Rockwell C50. About 50. It's through hardened. She's tough as a Russian winter and just as mean. We're going to cut this with some high grade of Chinesium. Now occasionally some slips through the cracks that can't stain tongue glide. Well it ain't tea bag and considering I don't really use the metric because I don't have the collets and so forth for it, it really ends up being a sore dick deal. You can't beat it, or can you? So I'm not all that concerned with process reliability, I'm just concerned as to whether or not we'll be able to cut this hardened steel. We're gonna do some hard middling. I'm gonna come in here and face this off, and then I'm gonna twang this bit off so that I can make some uh, pew pew plates. Cunt stain tongue glide is the paragon of materials if you'd focus you fuck. And I think we're in a golden age here where even the regular scumbags can't figure out a way how to cheapen it to the point where it's unusable. It's that good. Uh, maybe there's some high grade Chinese EMB in mind and some sneaks out, out the back door. But I haven't found any tungsten carbide end mills that are nearly as horrible as the tungsten steel or the high speed steel. The grind is generally pretty good. I think that's because they're got to be diamond ground in special machines. We're going to come in. Holy shit, that's filthy. It's that welding spatter. Ugh, crunchy. <laughs> that, that worked really well. We're going to go in here and stimulate this. What we're going to do is come in. We're going to do one of the hardest processes, which is face milling, and it's tough on the cutter because all the heat is constrained in the very tippy top of the cutter. Also, we are going to use coolant because why not? I know a lot of guys just use air. We're using coolant, thermal shock be damned. And then after we do this, we're going to come in sideways and do a real deep cut, but a thin cut. We're only going to go 40 thou, which is 5% of the diameter, a little over 5% of the diameter. And let's look at our feeds and speeds. Now this is just like baking a cake. Here's our feeds and speeds. Not conservative, but not hugely aggressive. 2,400 ripples, 500 feet per minute. Uh, slow feed rate, relatively slow feed rate. And our depth of cut is going to be minimal. So we're going to be taking whisper cuts. Per usual, the setup and probing is a real pain in the cunning linguals. I don't, well, as you see here, because the my machinist, well, the carpenter's approximation of a machinist jack is obscuring the tool setter, I got to do it manually. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to probe G54, the Z height, on the vise and then I'll come over with the tool and just hit the tool offset measurement and it'll take that value off the G54 and uh, it'll know it's height and then we won't key rash. Now this thing, as soon as you take a remotest glance away from it or a little sigil to the land of boobies, whammo, you crack a probe. Now you always keep your eyes peeled because this thing is want to fuck right off on you. You see what I'm seeing? Not that. Might be obscured. We'll give her the old college try, regard irregardless. Right on. Happy, happy. <laughs> you can tell you're dragging <laughs> by the size of the chips you're pulling off. Now we pèse le piton magique. Tool offset measure. And it populates. Now we're 14 thou off. So it's actually 14 thou shorter than it's showing. So is that a positive? Or, uh, the robot knows how long this is, but it doesn't know how big around it is. We know it's 20 millimeters. We could probe it, but then we'd have to break all this down. Machining, I think they should change the name from machining to probing. The, 
<laughs> the probing trade. So now what we got to do is we got to probe our workpiece. The robot does not know where it is and we got an extra challenge here. We can't just go in and do a, a regular routine because we're going to hit on that big chunk of slag. Little bonus nachos challenge for this here Chinesium end mill. Easy as that, she's all probed in. Now, we, we think it's going to work, but we're just going to give a, a tentative, just squeeze a little one out just in case we get a nasty surprise and shit our pants. We're going to offset that Z height by two inches. Let it dance and fandango around. There are many ways to do this offset. I do it here in the universal offset, the G. This is dangerous, mine, but there is nothing on this machine that is idiot proof. Now, there's lots of buttons here what'll put a fuck right in your week. This guy, let's see. This guy, don't you worry. All you gotta do is randomly mash a button by accident and you will have hit the self destruct. Garen fucking teed. Now we're gonna be two inches proud of the top part of that workpiece. We're in 5% rapids now and 10% feed. Looks like we're into the facing cycle. Our Z height looks okay, X and Y look okay. We're gonna increase the feed rate to 100%. Gonna take a quarter of an inch cut with uh, 0.3 step over. Gonna increase the feed rate, we're only at 20%. 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80. 90, 100. Pretty vibey, still choochin'. You get a 16,000 pound machine vibrating at one and a half Gs. So it goes. We were doing okay until we weren't. Some mean bastard ship there. It clearly, a little bit too aggressive. We did quite a bit more damage than lost a cutting edge. Gun chowdered her right the fuck. I have not changed the surface speed. I have, however, changed the feed rate to 20. A smaller chip. Cordact. I also reduced the step over from 300 thou to 250 cart per inch. As you can tell, it's doing a fine job air cutting. Didn't like something there. Okay, we're seeing some red hot. I guess it's wiping. It's not taking enough meat. You see it's wiping that, that front edge off. So for the same amount of material, it had to actually make way more cuts. Or for less material, it probably made the same amount of cuts. And wiped that one out. If you have a look at the chips, quite a bit thinner. Beautiful Canadian style, dressed all around. Those are those delicious, uh, spiced with the floor sweepings. So, I think the end milling, the facing, uh, that's a no-go with this geometry. We're gonna go full depth of cut, that's inch and a half. And we're only going to go step over 40 thou. We'll be taken, at that spindle speed, we'll be taking about two thou per tooth. We're gonna do some trachoidal milling on the side of the end mill. I initially got that number, the 40 thou step over from a forum, and uh, not the best. 
I looked at the Niagara cutter, which ostensibly is a better cutter. It's more expensive anyway, so obviously it's got to be better. That's just science. And we're doing now 15,000 step over. Increase the feed rate to 30 inches per minute, and the surface feed per minute is remains the same at 500. Seems to be pretty happy. We're going to increase the feed rate to 40. Clearly got better parameters. It was doing okay at 40, so I amped it up to 50. That's all she wrote. That is a fantastic result if and you're in a situation where you gotta run what you brung. You can get her done with just a shitty old end mill. See, surface finish ain't that great. There's some bluing there at the top. That means it, it got hot enough to re-hardenify. We can see we wiped off. Obviously, the geometry is not optimized for hard milling. It's just an off-the-shelf four-fluter. And we wiped the flutes off there, and then we saw the results. So maybe back it back down from 50 down to 40. You got a fair bit of material out of that. I'll have another kick at the cat on that hard ox. I'm going to use this hard milling, the proper brand, name brand stuff. These um, Meritool, I believe, are all HTC, made in the US and A. But I don't want to flame cut that AR, not only because it's going to be a bloody abortion, but because I have it on good authority that it makes it very brittle. When you're hitting it with a pew pew, it's likely to crack right half of two. Till next time, thanks for watching. Keep your dick in a voice.